utilize KW connected enough around it. Yeah. Right. Hi, I'm Josh Bass from Vancouver, Canada. I'm with Keller Williams for eight years and been selling real estate for 18 years. Now I'm going to walk you through my listing presentation, and it's a three step process. The first part is preparation, the second part is presentation, and the third part is follow up. A lot of my listings come by way of referral and repeat. And so when the call comes in and they want me to come over and list their home, I have a conversation about what their needs are. What exactly is it you're looking to do? Are you moving up? Are you moving down? I have them tell me exactly what the reasons are that they're selling for. I get a real sense of what direction that they want to go. One of the things that we've done to make my appointment setting a little easier is we've time blocked. We follow what Gary says. He says time block everything that you do. And we've time blocked our slots in advance for listing appointments. Every day, Monday to Friday, we have a slot available at 4 o'clock and a second slot available at 5.30. So I've got a potential of 10 listing appointments Monday to Friday. That makes my life a lot easier because I'm able to time block my lead generation first thing in the morning and not have my day so loose and scattered so I'm trying to scramble on where to put a listing appointment. What we do now in our, in our team is we, we've decided to go paperless with our evaluations, our CMAs. So instead of printing off paper, what we'll do is we'll take it on the computer and convert it to PDF mark it up with a highlighter from there on the computer, and then create an email from that, email that package off to our client prior to going out to their home to list it. What I do when I, when I go on a listing presentation is I meet the sellers at the door, and I have them take me on a tour of the property. During that time, I'm actually asking them to tell me again, to recap again, what their motivation is for selling. So I'm getting them more comfortable than moving out of their house is what I'm doing. That usually takes about five minutes. And when we're done there, we transition right over to the kitchen table. We'll talk about the market, the evaluation itself, and that in itself is about 15 minutes. Once we've agreed upon a price that we're gonna list at, we'll sign a listing contract. They sign the initial three-page contract, they sign the property disclosure statement, and they sign the working with a realtor brochure. Outside of those three documents, that's it. I send in my measuring company to come in and measure the home. I send in my stager who's gonna contact them to come in and stage the home. And once she's done, then I send in the photographer and take the photos of the home. We always do a follow-up with them as well, just to say, how did that go? What was that experience like for you? keeps them feeling like they're in control and very much a part of the process, and it lets them know that we're paying attention to every detail on their listing prior to it even being on the market. One of the expectations that I set with the sellers is that I phone them twice a week on purpose. So I set their expectation for me to phone them on Monday mornings with what's called a Monday morning update, where I review everything that's happened for their home over the, over the past weekend with them. The second call that I set them up for to expect is on Fridays, and that's a Friday morning market update. And what I've set them up for is that I'm going to talk to them about any new listings that have hit the market, any expires that have come up, come off the market, and any solds that have actually just happened since that past week. They also know that on Friday, we're going to be talking about the numbers. Does the current list price that we're at right now still make sense in relation to the latest listings or the most current solds? They know in advance that that conversation could lead to a price reduction. And a lot of times, they bring that on themselves. They say, hey, look, you know what? It looks like we might be a bit high, Josh. Should we bring it down? So it's a natural transition to a price reduction. One of the reasons I choose not to do a pre-listing package is when I'm sitting in front of them, I really want their full focus and attention. I want their attention on me, and I want to be able to ask them questions where they're giving me their full attention and not flipping through a pre-listing package. Most of their questions are going to come straight from their gut, and that's really what I'm looking for. I'm Josh Bath, and I just shared my listening presentation with you, and I wish you all the best with yours. Okay, so 
that I'm an individual agent, obviously, so I don't have maybe some of the pieces that other folks might have. What I thought we might do is kind of go through my individual agent listing presentation, which I'm looking forward to updating uh, very soon, so I'm actually trying to use this opportunity to get notes from you guys, too. But kind of help anyone else who's an individual to kind of get a standard to go buy something, something set up. Now, this came right off of KW. I just changed it all up with my information. It's a great template to build from. And you'll find that, I believe it's either in Ignite or, I have to look for it, but I will put that on the internet side or on the Facebook page for you to get that. Is it just in the marketing? It might be under the marketing information, but I think that usually is, that usually just has like the logos and colors. Is this where I got mine? Is it, was it that? Okay, so there you go, the marketing. So, front page, go ahead and click on it. Uh, First thing, as any of you have taken any of our education, we start out with our 10 plus uh, service that we want to offer. You know, there, we want to make everything a 10 plus experience for our, our clients or our prospective clients to kind of separate us from other people. I just take this page, which is, I think it's part of the template, keep it on there, scale one to 10. It's, it, this is all sort of like a, a brief uh, profile of what their needs analysis is. For the next one. How do I win with you? How do I lose with you? What do you feel you have the right to expect from me as your real estate consultant? What do you feel I have the right to expect from you as a client? Boy, that one throws me. But that's always a great one to have, because that, that actually opens up dialogue. You know what, and that's what I was going to say. The great thing about a listing presentation, Scott just redid his buyer presentation, and he went, he used to go straight out of the Sean Kokoska buyer presentation, and he changed it a little bit. He said, I don't want to do like what I feel like I'm doing a slideshow. He said, the things that I'm putting on there are to keep me on track. So like when you're asking these questions, when the, the problem is when you sit down in front of clients that you don't know, they may be a little all over the place. So not only does it help you convey information to them, but I think doing this and having a, a format keeps you on track as well. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that? I agree. And I'll tell you something else. Nine times out of ten in the past, no other agent is asking these questions. Right. There's no other. Now that everybody is sort of, if you've noticed, the, the um, style of brokerage out there has realized that they can't fight against what we do. So now they're sort of trying to mirror what we do. So there's, you'll see them try to create similarities as they do. I still don't run across it that much. Go ahead and go to the next one. So my pre-listing preparation is my great big list of things that we want to work together on preparing for the list uh, the property to go on the market. I hate, hate, hate listing a house unless it is a shiny penny and they get sick of hearing me say I want a shiny penny to put on the market. Right. There's no, you know, it doesn't do anybody any good to get a house on the market and put, I personally believe those little teepees up all over the place. Fresh paint coming. New floors to be finished in August, or you know, stuff like that. it doesn't do anybody any good because they don't even they walk right past that. Okay, they're just looking at dirty floors. So this is all the, the steps that I go through with them. Okay, go to the next one. Let's talk about staging your home. We do before in the clutter. You can't really see it that well. Sorry, uh, but we talk about before staging the way you live in your home and the way you sell your home are two different things. And then. Staged homes are on the market about half as long as the non-staged homes. Staging home uh, brings an average of 6.3% higher sales price. Probably higher because I haven't updated this in a while. Again, wanting to update my listing presentation as much as you guys want to get it. But so I'm looking forward to doing that. And most of the time, I think when you, that becomes pretty obvious to a to a real estate agent. When you guys show homes, and you show 10 homes in a row. Don't you just like there's that one house you walk into, the lights are on. Everything's in perfect shape, and you go, thank God, finally. I mean, don't you do that? Don't you just like breathe easier when you walk into a house that's staged like that? You just have to convey that to the client, too. So. Are those your pictures that you put on the before? No, that was part of the template. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious. I, I'm a firm believer of I'm not going to reinvent the wheel if I don't yeah. have to. I'll be the first guy to go chase down producers that I think highly of in this office say, you know, can I see a copy of your listing presentation? Or I'm needing to update the information on my staging. Can I see what yours looks like? People have lived before us, as they say, right? 
Let's see, uh, pre-inspections. We talk about the possibility of doing a pre-inspection as opposed to just going by you know, what they do on their side so we have something to, to be prepared for. But, you know, depends on your house. Some houses, you know, they're in great shape. You're not really too concerned about that. Other houses, you know, besides offering a home warranty, you might want to consider having an inspection done ahead of time. I've started doing that on houses that are older than 35 years old. Just automatically? Yeah, I'm just trying to say, just across the board, and, and, and the best example is a story, and that's usually how I tell it. And I'm gonna use this one because I just put a house on the market yesterday, Gladstone, and it's an old house that's probably 65 years old. And you know what happens when you get those, they have a lot of old house problems. So I convinced the guy to spend 400 bucks for a pre-listing inspection. He found um, some fairly major plumbing issues in the main stack that caused us to go ahead and replace the whole main stack on the house. Some minor electrical things, but shockingly, the house was pretty clean other than that. So he spent 400 bucks on a pre-inspection and maybe 1,200 bucks on plumbing and miscellaneous things. But now we can go into an offer with a surety that there's not going to be any problems. And I'm using that inspection report with his permission as part of our seller's disclosure. So the likelihood is maybe 50-50 that the buyer buying this house will even want to spend money. They'll go, well, why do I need to? Because I've already got an inspection report here. They'll look through it. So it just makes for a smoother transaction. I told him, I don't want to give anybody any reason to argue your asking price. Sure. And so this will, spending 400 bucks now, will alleviate any surprises later on down the road. And it's just been my experience that 35 years seems to be that line in the sand for me. Rod, do you, do you price your own houses? Uh, do you price your own houses, or does somebody do that prep work for you? Do I? Yeah. See, yeah. yeah, right. Now, Elizabeth's starting to do some of them for me. I was just the thinking easy the other ones. day. How but I, I walked into one uh, two weeks ago was the first one that she did, and I, I hadn't seen the CMA literally until it was in front of me. Yeah. And she, I told her exactly what to do, highlight this and do that. She had it all laid out, and I didn't even break a sweat. I just kept going. See, right that's through. awesome. And I was just thinking yeah. the other day because I take way too long to do pricing. I do too. I take too long, and too. every time it drives me crazy because I'm like, this should be more efficient. Yeah. So maybe someday we'll have a pricing specialist. Yeah, I'll just pay them off. Who do you pricing use to be my guy? Same person every time. Yeah, same guy. David, David at uh, Advance. Uh, so you get the same inspector. He yeah. does all of your pre-inspects for you. How many pre-inspects do you think he's going to do over the course of the year? Uh, over the course of this year, I don't sell a lot of older homes, but he might do four or five. Four or five. Yeah. But I mean, so if you were selling a lot of older homes, he could end up doing 15, 20 houses. Okay, easy. and then do you work with him when you, with your clients when you're buying yeah. your yeah. inspector? So you throw him a lot of business. Yeah. You think he can cut your listing guys, maybe a deal? Yeah, and he does. He actually does. He does it for about, I think he said a 15% reduction just because that's business he's not getting now. Right. And he's not under any pressure to work yeah. it in quickly or anything. Yeah. You know? right. So consider that, guys. I'm always trying to figure out a way to kind of help our budgets, right? Keep that bottom line where it should be. Yeah. Okay, go to the next one. Home warranties, I love HMS, that's my guys. Yep, that's what um, I used to. Most home warranty companies will put the warranty on the house for the sellers before you know before you get the closing date. So the seller is covered throughout the life of the listing, and then that can or cannot become a negotiating piece in the offer that comes in. So I don't know if it's gonna stick or not, but you know, I know at least with like you said HMS, they like having it on there because you know it's their foot in the door. It's worth their while to kind of offer that. And if it gets negotiated in, which I'm working for in most cases, um, you know, it's, it's already set and done. So I think it's a fantastic tool. Uh, some people, I know when I first started out, I wouldn't put warranties on there and say, oh, they'll come to me and we'll negotiate whether they want one or not. And I found it's better to be proactive, just have it there. It's a selling point for people driving down the street. And it's gonna be a negotiating point either way, whether it was there or not. Right. So you might as well cover your seller while you can. It's what? An extra step where we show ourselves offering high customer service. Right. Every single one of mine has it on. Yeah. Every single one. It's free, Julie. Yep. It's yeah. free. Do you put it on there and you advertise it too, or you just put it on there? 
No, I'll put it on there. I mean, you and know, there's a place I'll get a writer. So there's a writer on my side. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, next. Uh, contract negotiation and transaction management. There's all the steps. Yeah. <clears throat> That's great because they get a three ring binder from me with all this in it. So as we're walking through the process of this home being listed and sold, and everything goes along with it, they've got a step by step. Okay. Go ahead. Thanks, Rob. My 16 step marketing plan. I will use, and there's 16 of these guys, so bear with me. I will use social media marketing Twitter, Facebook, Zillow, Trulia, video, Google Mapping, blog capabilities. I kind of put it all out there. Okay. Uh, staging your home. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Placing a for sale by uh, sign out there, using the property flyers, using an interactive voice response system and QR codes. So, you know, I've got the 800 number writer from uh, Arch Telecom, which I love because it captures the content. When somebody calls an 800 number, it says it directly to my cell phone. Um, and I also like that it gives me that background information so I can follow up with those people right away. Unfortunately, with the QR codes, I haven't found a way to get a lead capture on both QR codes. I'm still looking around for ways to do that. Um, I do get a response sheet from uh, from Google Analytics like once a month I think or once a week I should say how many people have viewed the property what pictures they looked at most when they looked at those pictures and I can use that information and take it back to my seller when I'm talking with them we're all in contact with our seller probably at least once a week I'm thinking I hope you guys are that. and that's the conversation I'm having with them I'm forwarding that information to them and any other information that I have to share with them but I'm telling them hey Here's what people are looking at it. You know, this is what they're looking at. So this is our, we all want an uh, uh, aha or a, a, you know, a really nice thing, that the, the, the pizzazz piece that steps out on the house. And we can say, it's obviously that kitchen. Look how many people are just loving on that, mm -hmm. right? So that gives us an idea of our marketing. Uh, just listed, just sold into the neighborhood. Of course, sending those out. And I put a little, you know, that was the little nice thing that my seller had said about me on there. So I put that on there because I want the client to see that not only did I sell that nice pretty house for somebody, but they thought I did a darn good job at it. Yeah. Where we go with it, uh, all the different listing hubs that we go to, uh, optimize your home's internet presence by posting it at over 400 local and global MLS systems. I think we're way above 400 at this point, but, yeah. but it's going to be 400 plus, right? Uh, adding multiple photographs, uh, creative descriptions. Obviously, every realtor and see like that's something you have to update. We're way past four thousand now. Go ahead. Talking a little bit about how the that's internet. right out of um, realtor.com. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's from. Took this out of realtor.com. It just shows how internet sells faster than any other. Realtor.com has a listing presentation too, and actually, my old one used about four or five pages right out of their mm -hmm. listing presentation, and that was one of them. Take that template from KW. Go to realtor.com. Go to KCRAR. Yeah. Go to, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, even, uh, heck, I think even um, HMS has something called Marketopia. Yeah, they do. Where you can get free marketing material there. You can go through that stuff. I'm not saying use it. I'm saying go look and see what could be of value to you. Um, the showcase listing through, and, and you know, I didn't think this was a big deal. The yeah. realtor showcase thing. But twice so far, I've been on listing appointments that the sellers have brought up. Well, do you use the uh, the advanced version of Realtor.com with this? I do. Yeah. I, I was surprised that they even knew that, but that's why that ended up making a slide. We can also set up on both Realtor.com and Trulia an automatic response to your clients, so they get that report right, right. right in their email. And I do do that. I go through my Wednesdays, in fact, today is my day where I go through all my social media and pull all those reports together. I automated ones go automatically with any other one I'm sending over to. A, a virtual tour, we all have those, right? Uh, so I want to make that a part of it. I use a company called uh, BI360 to do my virtual tours. And I use postlets.com also to do a lot of my listing information. <coughs> if it's a house, that fits my like if this was a, this was a nice house sold at a high price it kind of fit my budget it, it made sense to kind of go that extra step to do all the marketing I could because when you get a more expensive house you've got a smaller pool of buyers so you have to do 
bigger marketing pieces. And so I was happy to do, I'm happy to do uh, virtual tours on those bigger houses, no problem. Happy to eat them. that cost. That's part of my marketing budget. When it's a smaller home and it might not make physical sense, I love using Postlets because Postlets is literally creating a microsite. This is a splash page, a microsite for that house. It's got, it's got a QR code too. You can get reports from that also. It goes right to Twitter, right to Facebook. <clears throat> it's a great tool to have and it generates a QR code just like my virtual tour homes creates QR codes. And I go, I go down to uh, the Office Max and I get those weatherproof labels and you can get, the biggest ones I've found are you can get two of them on one 8 by 10 piece of paper and they're like vinyl. And you print those out and you know the, the uh, listing, the flyers that you guys put on your boxes, right there on the front of that box, that's where I stay. So they've got a QR code, if they're a QR code savvy person and they want to go up there and snap a picture of it, then they're either going to get the virtual tour or they're going to get the micro website, which is really nice, I think it's walking distances and all kinds of community information that you don't necessarily get from the virtual tour, or they're going to get the virtual tour. Uh, create a home book, comment cards for the flyers. Um, I don't know if that's where I mentioned it or not, but one of the, the things I like to do the most, and I beg and plead, and I don't know why I can't get my clients to do it, but I, and they're all gung-ho for it at the time, is I ask them to write a little story about that house about living there, what it's meant for them. They're, you know, maybe they're at a house where they're moving up from the 150s range, their first house up into something in the 200s, and their kids have got older in that house, and they, it's a great neighborhood, and they've just loved it there. And I'm just like, you know, give me a paragraph, maybe two, and I wrap it around that book with the disclosure statement on it. And it, I told them, I literally want that, that story or that little no to be a hug. I want them to feel like, oh, this is a great place. I want to have my family here. Or look at all the good, positive juju or vibes or whatever you want to call it there is for that. And, and they all love it when I talk about it, but it's really hard to get them to give me that. <laughs> so target our marketing. Uh, include the home on the MLS tour. Advertise your home in the real estate magazine. It's hard to do anymore, but if it's requested, I'll do it. Uh, create an open house schedule. Uh, let your clients know they have 24-7 access to all your marketing schedule. You can do that through uh, AT Edge. But oh, that is. What was that last one? What is that? Um, create an open house. Twelve. No, something about that. What did you just say, Ross? Have uh, as a client, they have 24-7 access to your marketing schedule. So you know how you invite your client into uh, your your Edge tool. Oh, no, I haven't ever invited a client into my EMG. I did it way back in the day. Of course, now here I am stepping back into the role, and I haven't had a chance to come because they move everything around every so uh -huh. often. Okay. I haven't been able to master that back, but there was a way where you could have them in there, and, and long story short, they can they basically go in there, and this is here, and it has the schedule. It's like, you know, we said we're going to do so many open houses and once a month or whatever. Huh. So like That's when you do something, you check it off, and then they can yeah. see what you've done. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So if they're questioning, you know, what have you done to sell my house? You're right. like, well, log in and it's all there. Not damn good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all technology. It's all. Make sure, uh, make sure you check it out. Whoop, I'll grab that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're three weeks behind. Right? Yeah, so I haven't done anything. I, I actually did it all and I forgot to check it off. Uh, no, don't do that. Say it one thing. Uh, target our marketing to the active buyers and investors in your area. Yeah, so if it's obviously investment property, George, your doors. You know who the investment agents are in your community and in your office. So we want to go right at those guys and say, hey, I've got an investor who's got six properties. I want to make sure that you're nose to nose, belly to belly on this. Um, provide your weekly updates. Talking about that earlier and um, giving them access. Let's see. Owner accept, uh, exclusive access via kc-shelter.com. That's my website, so I'm letting them get in there, setting them up on that. Uh, home warranty and for, let's see, in an effort to value the property as accurately as possible, I do a three-step process is what I tell them. It's like, first, I'm going to go do a market analysis, and then I'm going to preview the top three listings with you, and then I'm going to do a, an agent tour prior to listing if we have the time available. Because what that does is when you do your CMA, my belief is, in their mind, you know, there's wiggle room. We're not exact. 
even though you may know you're dead on because you know your community. You take that husband or wife or buyer or seller or seller, whoever it may be, and you take them through their competition because they know that Joe's house is listed for $20,000 more than my house is just as nice. And then they're not aware of the fact that the Joneses have updated everything in that house. or And they just, you literally put their competition right in front of their face. Suddenly they have less to, less discrepancies to have, right? And then finally, when you had the agents come through and do an agent tour and value that property, nobody could complain about the price you're dead on. There was a there was a show, and it didn't last for more than a couple of seasons. It was out of Vancouver. There was this guy that used to do that. He used to take, like, people would be on the market, and he would take them to the three competitors around. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, he was in one show, and he had one of those little um, laser um, measures, like I have in my car, is exactly the same as mine. And uh, this woman standing there going, well, our master bedroom is way bigger than this. <laughs> and he goes, really? And he goes, da dink, da dink. Huh, there are uh, 2,000 square feet and yours is 1,863. I don't think so. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, God, I want to do that sometime. <laughs> He was so I know he was like so. I don't think so. Yeah, he was kind of getting paid by the show. He was yeah, he was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I just want to say too that I've offered to take him up to five through five wow. listings. Yeah, I've only had one person take me up on it. Yeah, they don't years. Years. They, don't, they don't care, you know. But I offered. That's like my very first thing that I offered. The best one that I ever got was they said, you know, no matter what I offered time wise, they never had time to go do it. I was wrong, but they don't have time to go look at the Yeah, problem. exactly. So finally I said, no problem. I love technology. I'm just going to grab my phone and I'll go videotape them for you and email you that. And then we can get together at whatever time's convenient with you and we can talk about them. That's it. She, no, we're fine with it. It's okay. <laughs> so it happens. It's, it's just human Back nature. Into it's all it is. You can't, you know. Any one of us could be just like that. Right. Okay. Next. So, uh, look, I was doing more report before lower report was hip. Yeah. Um, so I've got, at that point, my, what is that? List price versus average sales price against the board. And the next one. My average days on market. Well, you could tell it was a bad market then. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, that was doing good. I was kicking my rear end at 70. <laughs> Okay. I remember when my average days on market was close to 100, oh. but I would say, but here's the here's the really good news. That's <laughs> like two and a half times <laughs> better than the average age of 235 or something. Yeah, when you look at 70, you're like, man, oh my god, yeah, they got more than 270. Yeah. So other things that I can offer them value-wise, hey, if you need me for anything, I can get you repairmen, I can get you movers, I can get you plumbers. Just contact me, I'm happy to help you. Do you think I have re uh, relationships with those guys? Oh yeah, absolutely. I forgot those guys. What are you doing, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you think I go well, no. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah no. I have relationships with those guys. I, you know, that's part of my team. I that's thought you did that. Yeah, ask somebody else. <laughs> you know. <laughs> about Ross, so that gives you my about Ross. <laughs> that's my client first philosophy. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, you want to read that? Go to my so website. It's on there on my page. Uh, and then I have testimonials. I think that's it. Oh, no, they're homework. I always give them homework. Oh, yeah, you got it. Homework. <laughs> Your answers to these questions will guide me in how to best serve you, and we'll discuss these at our listing meeting. So I'll send this ahead of time if I can, or I'll give it to them while we're there and let them work through it, and we'll discuss it. You know, a lot of times somebody will take me on the, the, the tour of the house, and I'll leave the other one behind and fill that out. Um, so what's the most important things for you? What's you know? I just just the generic questions right out of ignite. But they're great. It's a great tool to have. How often do you want to be contacted? How do you want to be contacted? No. That's it. That's all. Yeah. Any questions on that? Okay. Nope. Yeah, okay. Then I'll put Ron up here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. My order single appointment. I don't. It'll be better when I'm done. With it. Okay. Anything you guys would add to it? For posterity, is there anything you guys would add to it that you didn't see up there? One thing that I do, you said you provide them with a moving list. I do provide them with a checklist of things to think about when they're going to be moving and mm -hmm. changing utilities and doctor's offices and all the places that they need to touch 
I have that. After I get the listing appointment, I have that. You know what I get it from? My buyer's presentation. My buyer's presentation from the old, I think it was the old, might be the old KW, but I think it was like the old one off of MLS. And at the end, it had those little contact sheets. I've been here over a year and I haven't updated my listing presentation, so I've been weighing it for the past That's year. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads right into You're Ron right. Henderson. I've been winging it <laughs> <laughs> speech. So if anybody wants to see mine, you can see mine up here too. I can pass it around too if you want to see it. So, like I said at the beginning of the class, where this all comes from is that, you know, I think um, if you don't have a listing presentation, you need to get one. If you do have one, how long have you been using it and is it time to update it? Because when I, like I said before, for some of you that weren't here, two years into the business, I just came in and winged it for the first two years. And, you know, I, I did okay 15, 20 in the first couple of years each year. So I did all right. But then I started running into competition, and I would be one of three or four or five agents in there. And I was losing them in that perspective. So I took this class that Keller Weems that we gave in our office called 36-12-3 which means 36 uh, closings in 12 months with three hours of lead generation. And part of that course was that you need to create your own unique selling proposition, or unique proposition, and because everybody has a different background. Like my background was in advertising and marketing. That's what I did before I came into real estate. And actually right before I came into real estate, I worked for a website company in sales for a year and we had companies like Lee Jeans and Jockey International and Kodak and Duncan Toys. So I had the opportunity to be sitting in front of these large Fortune 500 company president and vice president of the marketing company to see how they sell their products online. So when I came into real estate, I was a little shocked at how little real estate agents knew about marketing online, even though that's where all the buyers were. And I will tell you, it is still that way 10 years later today. Even though the high-speed internet has given us many, many options, uh, real estate agents still don't understand the whole online marketing thing. So for, um, from about 2007 to about 2012, that was my whole pitch, okay? And I had a binder, some of, of which looked very similar to what Ross is doing. Uh, with Realtor.com and then some statistics from the local market and statistics from my own and I used to pitch that my unique selling proposition was that I understood online marketing better than anyone else and it got to the point where I really wasn't losing a lot of listings by doing that even when I was competing. Then 2012 came around, the market started to turn around and I realized two things changed. One, I was now um, the, the market was better, so people didn't re people knew they weren't sitting on the market for six months, and they really didn't need, I guess, as top of an agent anymore. Okay, so they didn't really care about how much money I was spending on marketing. And then number two, uh, there started to be um, this point where everybody now was advertising their listings on all the websites. When it became Oh, when, when people started, when the general public knew Trulia, Zillow, and Realtor.com, and you could name, and they could name those, my unique selling proposition kind of went away, because now they knew all agents were on those sites, uh, including Keller Williams and Reese and Nichols and all. Everybody just across the board knows that because agents like Ross started coming in saying, "I do social media. You're going to be on all the websites." So I lost my unique selling proposition. So today, I do things a little bit different. About two years ago, I got a real estate coach, and we kind of worked through this process. I put the book away, and I just started having a conversation with people. So my listing presentation is really nothing more than a following the process. So I, it starts all the way back with the initial phone call. I have a list of 20 questions that I ask them. So I started asking, better questions because if you're the, in, when questions? you're in when you I can give you a copy of those I should have brought them with me today I'm sorry uh, I'll, you remind me before we're done and I'll make copies for everybody because I stole them from somebody else <laughs> and just and just made them my own so what I started realizing is is that when I'm in a multiple uh, in multiple 
presentation with other agents, he who has the better knowledge ends up getting the listing. So I started asking better questions on the phone so that I could come in better prepared. One of the questions Ross has on his is, what's a win-win with you? What do I need to do? Because I don't want to waste time and go through the entire world of real estate with you if the most important thing to you is a quick sale. Because that's a different conversation than I want to make the most amount of money. And believe it or not, I just had one of those. I have a little house over in Grace Moore that's for sale at 85000 The guy um, got me through a friend of a friend. And when we, when we talked on the phone, he said, I've done a lot of work to this house, but I want to buy my mother's house. I have a great opportunity because she's not going to wait forever. The most important thing to me is how can I price this home to get it sold in 30 days? Well, that's a totally different conversation. Okay, So we just went straight there. So asking better questions up front will make you the more knowledgeable real estate agent when you get to the listing presentation. Because whatever is the top three things to them, that's what I'm going to talk about. So I can kind of bob and weave. It doesn't have to be the same exact listing presentation every single time. And I'm sure Ross would do that too. If, I mean, you have the presentation, but if that deviates from that sure. and goes deeper with a client, forget the listing presentation. You can come back to that. Don't lose the moment of the conversation where you're connecting with them. Does that make sense? So what, what I do today is it starts with the questions and then it starts with setting expectations of what's going to happen when I come over for the listing presentation. So here's my exact script and I'll, I'll give you guys this later written down too so you don't have to take notes. Okay. I say to them, Angela, when I come over to the house, it's going to take about one hour of your time. So I want to make sure that you guys definitely have an hour blocked off. Occasionally it takes a little bit more than that if you guys have a lot of questions for me. I'm going to have as much time as you need, but I need at least an hour. Is that okay with you? So when we come over at 1 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow, I need you to block off from 1 to 2 for sure for me. Can you guys do that? Yeah, okay. So I'm getting the buy-in there. Now, what I want to do is I want to start looking at your home when we get inside the front door. So I'm going to come up the drive with the mindset of a buyer because I've never seen your house before. So when I'm walking through the house, I'm going to just probably talk out loud about the positives and the negatives. And I'm going to assume, Angela, that if you, if I see something in your house that you feel needs to be updated, or that I feel that needs to be updated, or improved, or fixed, or changed, or staged, or altered in some way, because I thought that that was going to financially hurt you in the sale, I'm assuming you and your husband would want me to tell you that, right? And, oh yeah, yeah, sure, that's exactly what we want, okay? <laughs> now, see what I've just done? I've, I've, I've gotten their buy-in for me to be totally honest with them. Now, I'm not gonna be rude, but I'm gonna tell them what they need to do. Now, I will tell you, that one script alone has gotten me more business than anything else I've ever done. Because now what happens is, I go inside the front door and I say, Angela, thank you so much for having me come over. You know, here's my husband, and then, okay. Now, when I talked with Angela, I turned to the husband. Now, when I talked with Angela on the phone, I told her what I wanted to do was start by going through the house first. And I'm just gonna kind of like talk out loud as we're going through the house, is that okay? Sure, because if there's things in the house that need to be changed, because my goal is to get you guys top dollar. So, if there's something in the home that I feel is gonna hurt you financially, you guys want me to share that with you today? Oh yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, okay, all right. I'm just, you know, I'm setting expectations, but I'm getting their buy-in because I'll tell you one of the number one things today that people still tell me when I'm in a competitive bidding situation with multiple agents, I'll say, uh, when we're signing the documents, I'll say, Angela, you know, I know you and your husband met with several agents. Just out of curiosity, I hope you'd be really honest with me. Why did you choose me? You know what they say? Because you were honest with us. Now see how repeating that back to them got them to say, like, I can't put honest, the most honest real estate agent. Yeah. You can't put that on your business card because you either are or you're not. But I'm creating an environment of honesty, which is what we want, right? Like how many times 
have you said to yourself with an agent, I mean with a seller, God, if they would just be honest with me and tell me that. So I'm setting the tone for honesty by saying up front, I, I, you, I think you want me to be honest with you, correct? Oh yes, we do. And then once you're inside the house, you repeat it again. And as you're walking through the house, then you can say anything you want. You can talk about the nasty wallpaper, and you can talk about their hideous carpet that needs to be replaced, and everything else. So I learned through trial and error that that's, and through listening to other top agents, that that's the script that I use. So as we're walking through the house, we walk through the house, and that usually takes 20, 30 minutes. I'm getting another disc profile at that point. And, and, and think about this. This is all part of the presentation, this whole thing. Walking through the house, I'll be honest with you, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of houses. I don't really need to see another house at this point in my career. I can tell you, normally I know what the price is going to be before I even walk in the house, right? And I'm sending a stager over to beat the crap out of them of their personal items, so I don't care about that either. And I'm sending over a personal photo a photographer, so I'm not worried about that either. So I don't really need to see another house, especially if it's a three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage split entry, right? There's a dozen of them, they're all the same. It's all about who's got the nicest carpet and the coolest wallpaper, or the coolest wall colors, and that's about it, right? So I'm walking through the house to get to know them. I'm kind of trying to create this level of honesty, and I'm repeating again. Now, I hope you guys don't take offense to this, but I'm just trying to get you the absolute maximum dollar amount of your house. So, and they're like, oh no, you're not offensive to us at all. <laughs> yeah. Good, then the lime green paint in the kitchen has got to go. Yeah. And I'll say really blunt. I don't like it, but. <laughs> yeah, or, or like the, the gold, I use myself all the time, I'll yeah. say the gold and the glass and brass light fixtures. I'll go, yeah, I know. And they go, yeah, I always wanted to change them. And I'll go, you know, I'll be honest with you guys, Ross, um, I'm just waiting until the glass and brass comes back in style again so my wife and I can put our house on the market because I don't want to spend all this money, you know, change. and I'll say stuff like that, you know, and so, and that kind of like takes it down the tone so I'm not like beating them up. So just those kind of things. So once we're through walking through the house, um, and I've already set the president on the phone, I've told them when we're done walking through the house, then we're gonna sit down at the table and I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my background we're going to go through some of the processes that is involved in selling the house. And then um, after that, I'm going to bring a, uh, and you can ask me any questions that you want at that point. And then I'm going to bring uh, a market analysis and some pricing and a total cost breakdown, all of which takes about an hour. Is that okay with you guys? And they'll usually say, yeah. So after we walk through the house, then we're sitting down at the table. I have this in front of me with the CMA, and this is my seller information packet that I did not have up until two months ago. <laughs> and um, the first thing out of my mouth is this. I'm sitting across from him and I'll go, Ross, what questions do you guys have? And they might be like this long silence. The ones that I love are the high C's. I used to hate the high C's. The high C's will pull out like the list. Okay, well, let me get the list out so I can, because they've got 15 questions that they want to go through. Mm -hmm. Great, there's my listing presentation right there. I'm just answering their questions. You know how much time that saves? Like if you just answer their questions, like nobody does that. They get right into the listing presentation. Let me show you how great I am at selling houses. And so then I kind of come off a little bit different in that I'm just, I'm a questioning technique, and this is something that my coach and I have worked through over the last couple of years, but I, I've kind of refined it here and there and realized what works and what doesn't work. So this last year, I had nothing to leave behind. And it kind of started getting to the point where I was doing a lot more listing presentations, competing with other agents and almost all Keller Williams agents, shockingly, uh, because I tell people now, they'll go, well, we call three agents, they're all from Keller Williams. And I go, that's because all the top agents are Keller Williams now. And they'll go, really, why is that? And if they ask that, I'll go into it. You know? But this is kind of what I originally started with the Leap Behind Pack, because there was a couple of times I would go on a listing presentation, and I noticed that they would have these sitting on the table. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it on purpose, yeah. but you know, sometimes you glance down at them, yeah, 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 try to see whose name it is, and that kind of thing. 
So what I put together was basically something that I could just quickly go through with them. So I have a table of contents, and then I just have a generic letter to them that kind of explains, uh, you know, um, a little bit about my thought process um, in helping them. Like paragraph two says, we understand that selling a home is one of life's most important events. Every penny comes from this transaction is important to you and your family. See, I just want them to know that I think that way. So really think through what you want to, we employ a full-time staff of experts to help you every step of the way, selling your home for the most, and honestly, Elizabeth put most of that together, just stealing pieces and parts. She just Google listing presentation, realtor's listing presentation. You'll find hundreds of them like that. So that's another good tip from this class. And we pulled different pieces and parts of things that I wanted to say and word out in that. So then, um, one of the things that I put right up front was the team because I kept, I kept bumbling my way through explaining the team. I don't know why, but I just did. I just, for some reason, they weren't getting it. And I actually lost a couple of listings because people didn't understand that they wouldn't be working with me from A to Z all the way through the process. When in reality, I felt like that was a bonus that you're not working with me to A to Z, but I couldn't explain it. Really? So now I just put all of it on there. I can point to the pictures and I can explain very quickly what it is. You know? I was gonna say one of the oldest scripts about that, some of us have been here long enough, but we know we've heard it, but it's the old, you know, if you went to you know, General Motors, the CEO is not the one putting the tire on the car. Right. He doesn't know anything about that. I use the dentist script. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's so specialists talk, for everything. Yeah, it's like, it's, it, here's, the, here's the reality, guys. Most, you know, 99% of real estate agents are single agents, and maybe they have an assistant. But if you go to the dentist, and your dentist, if you were calling the dentist today, and your dentist picks up the phone and answers the phone, you probably shouldn't be using that dentist, <laughs> you know? And, and just, it's one of the ways that I just explain to them, and I say, you know, so I have a person at the front desk that takes your insurance, then I have a person that comes and gets you and takes you back and gets you all comfy in the chair, and then I have a person that um, might clean your teeth, and then I'm the guy that comes in and just oversees the whole process and, and looks at the x-rays and does the whole thing. If, if I have to explain it, sometimes I'll do it that way or I'll use a different analogy. But I think this makes it easy. There's something about them being able to see the picture, the title, and a brief explanation of that person to understand why it's important. And then I'll, I'll talk to them about the, the upside of using a team, um, and then I'll just move on. Um, so the next page is basically a breakdown. It's the 81-step sales. See, I've got 18. Oh, I've got 16. <laughs> So this is the joke, and I say this every time, no joke. I say to people, you know, a lot of agents, now sometimes I, I'm aware that I'm throwing another agent under the bus by saying this too, <laughs> but you know, what the hell. So, <laughs> so I say to them, uh, you know, some agents have come in here with their 21 step pro, you know, um, marketing plan, and I said, my fear was that if I came in here with a 21-step marketing plan, Ross might come in behind me with a 31-step marketing plan, and then you're going to sit here at the table going, well, I wonder what those 10 things are that Ross's not doing. You know, and I'll say that to them, and they'll laugh. You know? And so I said to them, I decided to go a little bit different. Now, not that the marketing, this is part of, this is my script, not that the marketing is not important. It is, it's a big critical piece of this whole puzzle, and that's one of the things that you're hiring me for, but if I was really good at marketing and sucked at everything else, it's it's gonna be a problem because I wanna make sure that you guys get top dollar and get paid at the end of this process. So I've broken down the whole process because I'll bet you, you guys may have sold two or three houses in your life, but I'll bet you never knew exactly what us real estate agents do, do you? Now when you say that to them, their eyes will light up. Yeah. I've noticed that. So instead of having it in different pages, I just chose to do it this way. There's no magic number to 81. I actually put 200 things on there, to be honest with you. And then I looked at that list and I go, good God, people are just gonna like, their eyes are gonna glaze over because it's gonna be eight and a half pages of stuff that they know nothing about. So I really just broke it down into the most recognizable things. 
and I think I kind of group some things together and put it in chunks. So then here's what I say to them. I say, there's eight, the 81 step sales system, and this is not all of them, guys. I have over 200 things that I actually do, but I didn't want to bore you with all the details. So I figured I'd kind of condense it for you today. So this is the step by which real estate agents pretty much off, at least on my team functions. So the initial research before the client consultation, I've already done that today, and I'm gonna share that with you here in a moment. We're at the client consultation right now, and here's what we're doing here. We're walking through the house and doing that. Then there's the pre-listing period. And guys, there are things that I can do to market your home to the real estate community before you even hit the market. Because what I want to do is create a buzz about your house that day one we hit the market. I want multiple people looking at your house. Now here's the weird thing about that. I've thrown houses on the market lately, and I can, I can say this now. I've thrown several houses on the market lately, and all of a sudden, two or three agents are showing them the first day. Have you ever had that happen here recently? You know what they do now because they remember that we talked about this? They'll go, oh my God, you've got three people. We just put them on the market like four hours ago. And I'll go, yes, I'm so good. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, you know, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. You know, I planned it that way. Da, 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 da. Insert, insert music here. You know, so there, there's things that you're doing, though, like listing, signing the listing contract, setting up appointments for the home stage, or finalize any repairs in the home, measure interior rooms, prepare MLS profile sheet. I mean, before we go on the market, Elizabeth, pretty much two or three days in advance when she orders the photograph, she's preparing the listing already online. When she gets the photograph, she's just filling in the property description and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that you really do before we go on the market. You just don't even realize that, that you need to convey that to your clients so that they know that. Because then they won't come back and go, what are you doing to sell my home? Well, I've got 81 steps that I'm going to sell your home. I mean, what more do you want? So go to the next one. And then I got um, the listing goes live, full marketing plan, wham. I wanted like a page and a half of stuff on that. So, you know, I just put a whole bunch of stuff on it. bigger font. Yeah, we really do that. Actually, there was some method to that madness. I will, I'll show you why in a minute here when we get to the houses. So these are just different things that we do uh, to advertise the home. And I just, I'll, I'll usually tell them, you know, I'm not going to go through all this today. You guys can read through this later if you have any questions. I just hit some of the highlights, you know. Um, that are in that list that I think stand out. Offer received, home inspection period, home appraisal period. Now usually when I get to right there, that's the point where almost every time they will say, oh my gosh, why? I had no idea that you guys did all that. And I go, that's just for your one house. I got 15 houses on the market, you know? And so that's what's the important of my team because right here on this page, Courtney's going to take over here and be with you every step of the way, and she'll talk to you at least twice a week to keep you updated on what's going on with the sale of your home. So then you go to final. See, I've got it breaking down into home inspection period, home appraisal period, final underwriting and commitment, and then a title commitment. Then on the next page, uh, we even have closing and post-closing. So there's even things that we do after the sale. For instance, like once your sale closes, we make a copy of the HUD-1 statement, and you're going to get that in the mail January of next year in case you need that for your taxes. And they'll go, wow, okay. I mean, they just don't know these things. So if, if nothing else, just make a big list of all the things that you do. And guys, I state that with them. Most of my people are doing dot loop, and I'll tell them, hey, your HUD-1 is going to be in there. And you can access for the rest of your life. Yeah, what Ron does is puts a physical touch in their hands. They, they see something from Ron Henderson that got that delivered in the mail. That's one more. It's so funny because like every January they'll call me and let me go, hey, thanks for sending us the statement. I was in the day I was thinking I was preparing my taxes and I forgot all about that, so I just shoved it in there and you just made it so easy and I'll go. Oh yeah, okay. Well, I didn't do it. Elizabeth did it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, okay, sure, yeah. great, yeah. Right. <laughs> so then, um, that uh, the next page after this, um, home sold. Now, see, a few years ago I couldn't do this, but now I'm just trying to make a statement. Okay. So there's every home that I've ever sold right there. 
So when I go in and I tell them I'm sitting in front of them or we're touring through the house or somewhere in the conversation, I tell them about my team sold 99 houses last year, there they all are right there. And it's a real visual for them to see that. And we actually put them in little small type like that on purpose because I kind of like wanted it to be like this massive thing. And, and then I usually say, all the way back to 2005, I sold a whole seven homes, yay! <laughs> <laughs> I, I use comedy through the whole thing, and, you know. And they'll go, oh, that's so funny. I'll go, isn't that cute? Seven homes in the first <laughs> nine months. I think it started in April, so, you know. And we that's joke about cute. that, but, um, but, you know, to sellers, this, this is such a visual of your experience. You know, if you, if you haven't been in the business for a long time, you don't have to use this. But if you have, you know, it, it, it's a real visual for them to let them know that I'm not just saying that I sold that many. There they are, you know. Um, the next page is just some testimonials. We're still updating this right now. But sometimes what you need to do in testimonials, I'm going to offshoot here real quick. When you're getting testimonials from a client, you need to get very specific information. I'm not just talking about the generic, hey, you guys were great, love the transaction, we got it closed. I mean, like the more specific information you get, like, like you know, your stager was so incredibly helpful to us. I love that you paid for a stager, you know. That, that's the kind of stuff you want them to have in here, because what you're going for is things that may speak to them, so they can read that testimonial go, wow, that's me, that's how I do That's how you want to get that testimonial in there. So it needs to be really specific, and we're still working through getting the very best of the testimonials in there. Um, next page is just generic stuff. Um, benefits of using an agent. That whole thing I stole from somebody else. Um, Can you tell me to blow that up? I don't even know where we got that from, Elizabeth got it. She got it from somebody else's listing presentation. And I don't, I'm not sure that we changed anything, to tell you the truth. Um, the next, Guest plus experience. Yeah, we might have changed that, yeah. <laughs> um, 10 questions to ask you choose your real estate agent. This is so funny. This came from Realtor.com. And I went on a listing presentation, I didn't get it, about a month ago, and the guy emailed me. And he said, hey, when you total high C, like off the chart high C of the Dispro Mom, he emails me this and says, I want you to be prepared to answer these questions when you come over. Well, I didn't read the whole email because I'm high on So I filled it out, like right there. It was like, he emailed it to me at like 7 o'clock at night. So I'm sitting around my laptop and go, and I filled them all out and emailed them back to you like in an hour and a half. And then, so like, he was so impressed that I took the time to fill all that out and email it back. Huh? No, I didn't. No, no. Whatever. <laughs> so, um, but, but I just took that and saved it and I thought, you know, those were some really good questions in there. Um, let me get one for you just to pick it up right here. How many days did it take you to sell the average home? How did that compare to the overall market? Um, the realtors you interview should have facts on hand and be able to present market statistics. Now, before I started coaching, I would have no idea of any of my statistics at all, but now I know them just like that. So I can tell you that the average days on market for realtors in the Northland in the month of December is when I pulled these stats, are 83 days on the market. The average realtor takes 83 days to sell the average home and mine is 41. So even today, I'm shocked at how many people don't understand how quickly houses are moving right now. So when I say to them, my average sale is in 41 days, they'll go, wow, really? And I'll go, yeah, some of them are selling quicker than that. Actually, half of them are selling quicker than that. You guys go to KCRAR, they put the new numbers up every month. Yep. And you can just cut and pay. This month, the average yeah, is probably numbers, like two but days. That's not too hard for you to do your own numbers. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, because I never pay that much attention to days on the market. Yeah. Um, 
Do you, do you, are you an agent that lists your, like I list my offer show for backups, so there are a lot of days on the market right yeah. until the end. Yeah. Do you do that too? Yeah. Even though it doesn't? Yeah. Okay. I do too. So what I do, the other thing that I do with this one is I will, if I'm the last guy in, I'll hit a couple of highlights. Trust me, when we're walking through the house, I've already told them what my average list of sales price is, and I've already told them what my average days on market is versus the market. So they've heard it once there, they're going to hear it again here because I'm going to hit that line, and then I'm going to give them some other questions. But if I'm the first guy in and you are going behind me, guess what you're going to get asked? Yeah. You're going to get asked these questions because I'm going to flip that open to them and say, oh, FYI, you guys said you had a couple of other agents you're going to interview behind me. You really should be asking them these questions. Mm -hmm. So that's, and like, and then, and then if the next agent bumbles that yeah. or they can't answer it, mm, not good. So that's just some way that I use them to do that, you know. Um, how to show your house, get top dollar. I think we stole that right out of somebody else. That's just staging stuff, you know. And I'll usually kind of run through this whole thing in about 10 minutes. And I'll say at the very end, if you guys get bored tonight and you can't sleep, um, pull this out and read it and they'll put you right to sleep. And they'll go, oh, you know, I'm laughing about that. So that's kind of the whole thing. Then I go straight from this and I'll say, now, I kind of ran through that quickly, guys. Any questions about any of that? That's what I asked the client. And they'll, sometimes they'll have some additional questions that we didn't cover there. And if I can reiterate some of the information that I think is key, I'll, I'll reiterate it in answering their questions, okay? So then from there, I go straight into the CMA, we talk about price, and I give them a total cost breakdown. I give them a seller's estimated proceeds worksheet based on the average sales price of my CMA. I do that every time. And I'm shocked at how many agents don't do that. And I will tell you many times that one thing also has gotten me a lot of listings too. Because how many times, I mean, when you want to know, they're upside down. Actually, I know that before I'm even going. And one of the ways that I don't go on a listing presentation okay. is right. if they're going to bring more than $5,000 to the table in this market, I'm going to call them ahead of time and give them the script over the phone and say, hey, Angela, if I knew today that you guys were going to bring $10,000, to the table to sell this home and pay everything off, okay. would you still do it? Right. And they'll go, what? And I'll go, yeah, well, I just ran the numbers on your house, and I'm very confident that you guys are going to bring somewhere between eight and $12,000 to the table. So I'm just wondering, am I wasting your time to come over and show you this, or do you want me to email that to you? And they'll go, oh my god, I have no idea. Well, um, And I'll go, OK, it sounds like I caught the, your breath, you know. Let's do this. I'm going to email this to you. You and your husband look at it tonight and call me tomorrow morning and tell me if we should still meet. Now, I had a guy, uh, his house was under contract this weekend. Um, he was going to bring five grand to the table, so he was right on the cusp. And he said to me on the phone, Well, I guess, man, I, I got to sell. And I go, Okay, sounds like we should meet then. And he said, You're sure? And I go, Yeah, I'm sure. Now the beauty of it is I got his house under contract in three days and he was only going to bring 15 grand. He's only going to bring 1500 to the table now based on the current one we have. But, but I told him ahead of time, I've had two of those so far this year. One was going to bring 15 grand to the table and one was going to bring 12 and we didn't meet. So I spent about an hour of time researching, building a CMA, emailing it to him, and I'm done. I don't have to drive over there, I don't have to do, and they appreciate me because of my what? Honesty. 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 Yay. Yay. We're back to the honesty yeah. thing again. The Maybe questions, I will put that on my business card. The questions card. you ask, are those the same ones in the buyer, or the seller questionnaire on KW, yeah. or do you use yeah. <coughs> same one? Okay. Let me go run and get that for you. I just, um, any questions about any of this? I'm in and out in an hour. So, so everything you went through there is in that book, so and that's what you leave, and you leave that book. <laughs> and I leave this with you. So, so that's already in May. Yeah, crazy. Elizabeth makes them up. Yeah. yeah, and the thing about it is, what's cool about it is, this gave me the idea, the, the idea that for this came from this, is that I wanted, I did not want to take two hours and explain everything that I did. But I, but I knew that there were people like, the, you know, proportionally, most people are an S or C just proportionally, more than 50% of the people 
or S and C's, and they like to have this information. The D's and the I's, I got them anyway because we're just going to get along. <laughs> I mean, when, when I come in and I just, you know, I can mirror and match what they're doing, and I pretty much got them anyway. What I was having trouble with was the S's and the C's. And what do S's and C's want? Information. They want to keep it. They want to keep it. They want to hold it. I have had this. I just had this. I slid this in front of a lady the other night, and I slid it right in front of her on purpose because I knew she was a high C. And she flipped this open, and her eyes glazed over, and I went, <laughs> like that, and she looked up at me and she goes, I'm so excited. Like this. And her husband just rolls, and he's a D. So her husband goes like this, he goes, whatever. And I go, you're going to read that whole thing tonight, aren't you? And she goes, I'll read the whole thing right after you leave. <laughs> and I was like, I got this one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, so, I, so, I, have I have a question okay. for you guys. Yeah, yeah. How do you handle the dot loop? Do you make formal face-to-face -face presentations on your contracts and your listings? Or I find using the dot loop that I do a listing presentation and then I typically send them the documents for signature. Oh, are, are you putting anything in there? Because in my listing presentation now, I have uh, I've added a couple of pages where I've explained the process of dot loop and the key highlights that they're going to be signing in their contract. I have a, I have a, a blank contract with the, the stuff that I pre-populated. Yeah. That I just keep in a folder that I bring with them. So I go through what a contract looks yeah. like, what a disclosure yeah. statement looks like. And I have that too, and but I then I also that have that a page. That's what I'm going to be sending them in this I thought about putting the disclosure statement in the back of this so that they could at least see it or tear it out if they wanted to. But I'm going to tell you, and I should have covered this, I never, ever, ever get signatures that day. Hmm. Like, it, I have right. I have it in my briefcase in the car, in the trunk, if I needed to. Like, if some dude said, no, I got, I want to sign today, yeah. I'd be like, uh, <laughs> well, oh, okay, let me go out to the car and get it. Uh, you know, I might have yeah. time. Because you electronically send it? No, but or because I'm just not prepared. I okay. just... Like, I just never ask them to sign right there. And matter of fact, I tell them up front, guys, when I come over to the house, I'm not even going to bring contracts with me. So, you know, um, we'll, we'll t if, if when I'm done, you decide you want to list with me, then we'll talk about that next step. But usually I walk out the door, and sometimes I'm gone five minutes, and they call and go, okay, you're the one. And sometimes it's the next day, and some days it's three days later if they're interviewing other agents. And I, I tell them, if you're interviewing other agents, keep going. Do it. Sometimes they cancel on them and go, sorry, we already found the guy. I mean, it, it just it depends, but I never get them that day. So then when they call me and say, okay, we've decided to go with you, then I'll say, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna, the next step is that we need to get together and sign the listing contracts. I'm going to give you um, two options. I don't care which you choose. This is my script. I don't care which you choose. Um, I can either, you can either make an appointment and we'll meet in my office. It'll take about an hour. Um, and we can go through all of the contracts and I can explain everything to you. You can fill out the seller's disclosure and do all that. Or what most people are nowadays, what I find most people are doing now, see I'm trying to wrap them into this because I, I like don't feel stupid because you're like not like everybody else. Um, what most people find really convenient is that I have this online solution where I can load all of the contracts online you can do it at the convenience of your laptop, either at home or at work, in the morning, middle of the day, at night, I don't care which. You can go through and read all of them. If you have any questions, you can call me, and you'll click on the signature line, and it'll create a digital signature. It's totally easy to use, and I don't care which way you want to do it, it's totally up to you. Like 90% of the people now will say, I think that second blank sounds good. I could right. do that at home. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And, do you and I explain like, nothing. Well, see, and I think when you're competing, to have that e-signature in your listing presentation, to know that busy people don't have to take an hour out to meet with you. And that's right why most of them choose